So now, start over, turn everything back down, except we just want a little voltage just to monitor something. Just a little voltage and then a little current. Because I'm about to put in the liquid nitrogen. And for this, I want you to ask yourself two questions. When I put in the liquid nitrogen and I drastically decrease the temperature of the carbon resistor, I want you to ask yourself, what will happen to the current? What should happen to the current? So stroke your beard thusly while you think about that. And then ponder what will happen to the voltage. And then watch the two numbers as you pour in the liquid nitrogen that you get from your TA. Right. And see what happens. Okay. Uh, so those are fun things to think about. And now back to the experiment. It's the exact same thing. One volt, negative one volt. Negative two volts, positive two volts. Positive three volts, negative three volts, negative four volts, po uh, positive four volts, and so on. Great. Time for the light bulb. Tungsten filament light bulb, a different material this time. I wonder, as I start putting in current, will the temperature stay the same? I can't answer that here. We need to go to my hideout. This light bulb, this tungsten filament, is around room temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. Should I turn it on? So let me ask you. You think this looks... So, so, so what's the temperature of this light bulb? Is it maybe double, maybe 40 degrees Celsius? No, no. Maybe, maybe 100 degrees Celsius, the temperature of boiling water? No, no, it's not. 200 degrees Celsius? No. It's around 2,000 degrees Celsius. 2,000. That's like a little hell in the light bulb. I see fire and brimstone and the river sticks to this light bulb. That's right. I see the river sticks flowing through the light bulb. Okay. No, the temperature is not constant. It goes way up. Way up. So, therefore, the resistance will change as we put in higher and higher power. Okay, so this is tungsten now. So, as the temperature goes up, it's opposite of carbon, and that the temperature goes up, the amplitudes of the vibration of the ions gets larger and larger, which means that they start getting in the way of the charged particles, which would decrease the current, increase the resistance as the temperature goes up. So if it increases the resistance, the slopes, because of the reciprocal of the resistance, should start getting smaller and smaller. In other words, it should start becoming more horizontal. Right? And then a mirror image on the other side. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's put it together. All right. So, okay. There's an easy way to switch to the light bulb. Make sure that it's off, and then all you really need to do is just take these from the resistor and just put in the light bulb, and voila, it's all set up now. However, I recommend you practice, so let's start over. Okay, this time I'm going to draw in the elements as I put it together. 
Okay, so first, the battery, the EMF. Okay, so red wire, out, the red knob, there it is, okay? Next order of business is the resistor, which is the light bulb. Okay, so of the EMF into the light bulb, and then we need a black wire to go out of the light bulb. Okay, and then after that, we need information, the current. Okay, so same as before, into the milliamp slot, another black wire out the COM common ground. Okay, and then finally, complete the circuit by putting it back to the EMF, so out of the current meter, back to the power supply. All right, and then we need information. Voltmeters always go in last, so we'll put the voltmeter parallel to the resistor of the light bulb. So that's right here. Voltmeter, high end, where it goes in, low end, where it goes out. All right, and then it's the same thing as before. Uh, make sure you turn it down because uh, we've got to be careful to, uh, to not put more than six volts through here. You might kill the light bulb. But it's the same thing, except this time you start with 0.5 volts. So go to 0.5 volts. Measure the current. The resistance is much less, so the current will be more. And then turn it off, switch them negative 0.5 volts to get the negative current and then go up to negative 1. Find the voltage, find the current, turn it off, switch to positive 1 and so on. So you want, so you want to start at positive 0.5 then go to negative 0.5. Negative 1, positive 1. Positive 1.5, negative 1.5, negative 2, positive 2, and so on. Excellent. So, let's talk a little bit more about these two curves. There's a lot of similarities between these two curves. The first thing that we notice is that if we only took a look at just the center piece here, this is essentially a line. Much like these. And I wonder what would happen to these if we did have enough power to drastically change the temperature. I wonder if they would curve when they got up. They would curve perhaps differently than those because of the different relationships of resistance and temperature of the carbon compared to the tungsten. Interesting. Also, uh, they, have, they both have what's called point symmetry about the origin. So, real briefly, point symmetry, we can define in a couple ways. If the point of symmetry is about the origin, that means you can pick any point on the curve, rotate 180 degrees and find a point on the curve again. Or, you can pick any point on the curve, make a segment to the point of symmetry, and then make a congruent segment on the other side, and you should once again find a point on the curve. Yes, I taught geometry. Or an algebraic way to represent this is if you take any old point, you should have a corresponding point on the curve of negative x, negative y. All right. Uh, and sometimes points of symmetries are confused with lines of symmetry. So real briefly, the letter capital T has a line of symmetry no point of symmetry. S has no lines of symmetry, but it has a point of symmetry right in the middle. O has a point of symmetry in the middle and an infinite number of lines of symmetry. Okay, so interesting things to think about when you compare these two curves. 